All right, I've often seen people cutting with one hand and they got a hand on this rope. Like, what's this hand doing? It's doing nothing. <laughs> it's doing nothing. Get used to leaning. I can lean into this one back here. And I can lean on that one and I can have both hands on my saw. Uh, very comfortable cut. Alright, I'm up in a heavily leaning. We got you know a decay right there at the, the union. Big branch broke off years ago towards the house. And so this entire lead, you know, is kind of compromised, but it's been this way for a while. It's totally alive, so there's a lot of reaction wood and, and tension wood on the back side of this, this curve. Uh, I've got an alternative tie-in point up in that neighboring oak with an anchor way over there. So we've got compression force kind of down through that limb. And, you know, I've got some pulling force too, obviously, but you know, I'm not planning on coming off of this bad boy. <laughs> so so that, that's, a, that's the key. Okay, I don't want to cut my line here. So we get this piece of deadwood out of the way. We've got this little elaborate squirrel feeder down here we're avoiding. Uh, they're going to keep this spar for, for, the, for the birds. I know, I know you guys are saying, you got that nice little echo, why aren't you just cutting with one hand? Be because I don't. <laughs> I've been doing this a lot of years and I, I never do that. You know, it's just, it is what it is. It's just not a tool I've put in my toolbox. I've stuck to the standard on that one. And it, you know, it doesn't cost me. That wasn't any loss of production there. I'm kind of taking my time anyways. Why do I need to cut with one hand? You know, I've noticed even, you know, some pretty high profile guys that casually cut with one hand. And I, you know, it, it all comes down to to habits of what you do all the time. And you say, oh, it's, well, if I, if I'm, if I always go to two hands, I'm always positioning myself. So I'm putting my lanyard on anyways, you know, so I can position myself to cut with two hands. All right, so this looked a lot farther apart from the ground. Now, I could keep my tying point there. I wanna go this way. Which way would I have to tie myself on? All right, so now I can turn around and I can lean into this, this tie in over here. I can leave this on here 
I've got a long enough lanyard to let myself out. Let me get this all on the right side of. Oh, look at that. All right, so now I'm engaged on both sides. So now I'm just in position. If I wouldn't have got that movement, that would have totally hit me. It's it swept by right, right out here. And so I got that little bit of movement. I got that branch out from over my head and then I was able to cut it free and get it to clear the pine. This is a very spongy <laughs> back line. Very spongy, okay. So now, can I get this to go? I'm gonna just get this out of my way. <clears throat> All right, so that clears that. We're gonna angle this this way just a little to get those branches out of those branches. Okay, I got a really spongy back line. Stayed outside of that. Should have took that bird feeder off, but we missed it. Put myself down here so I lean my leg against there a little bit. Snug this up. All right, we can lay that right down in there. 
Again, get your body positioning so you can just easily make this cut. Get accustomed to a th you know three point. I've actually got a four point because I got this back lanyard. I've got that line, and I've got my two feet. All right. I've often seen people cutting with one hand, and they got a hand on this rope. Like, what's this hand doing? It's doing nothing. <laughs> it's doing nothing. Get used to leaning. I can lean into this one back here. And I can lean on that one and I can have both hands on my saw. Very comfortable cut. If the tree moves a little bit, no problem. I'm leaning into two lines and I got two feet in position. I don't need a hand on anything other than my saw. Give me trees having fun. Oh, it almost caught my lanyard. That little devil. So that worked. Okay, now we... We just do brake cuts. I'm not right over that thing, so we should be pretty good. Now keep in mind, if I were to cut this one in front of me, it, it's not going well for me. So I'm gonna go pretty good distance. So we'll just have, you know, a backup. Everybody's taking lunch. So I like to cut most of the way through on these brake cuts like this. That, that one I got, it flipped over just like a hinge. Alright, 
So no hinge, just a leaning piece, cut most of the way through, and then just finish the back cut. Make sure you're, you know, close to the kerf so you can't get caught in a kerf. You don't want to be high and overcut it and then get caught in a kerf. It's going to be a lot easier climbing off of this thing than it was climbing up. Getting out back up on top of this was, was a little bit of a gymnastic move. Especially with a spongy top, but I can lean into it on the way down. So you see there, one to hang on there. And so I'm underneath my curve, so I, my saw can't go with. My saw is actually stuck in the stump. What you don't want to be is like on the top side of a curve and have it take your saw with you. One more cut. Cut out my, ouch. I'm shaking the squirrel defense system. I'm not gonna do this with my climbing line. All right, we'll kind of wiggle my hips out here and we'll, we'll come in here and just make a back cut. Pretty much solid black oak and that little echo ripped right through that pretty nice close enough to the ground if I come off I'll be okay all right I think this job is down to groundwork well, just in case I make a long video out of this vertical. Uh, yeah, this has been a fun day. Just kind of figuring out a couple little uh, tricky jobs. Nothing big, just tree work. Game of trees, we're having fun. Playing the game of trees